Jesus does many things in the Gospel of Mark to point us toward the kingdom of God. He heals people of diseases. He forgives their sins. He dines with outcasts and prostitutes. Jesus also points to the kingdom when he undermines interpretations of the law of Moses which exploit the powerless. Such was the case with an interpretation of the Mosaic divorce law, so abusive of women that it allowed a man to divorce his wife on the grounds that she had burned his supper. Jesus insists that the first question to ask about any decision, including divorce, is not what is allowed, but what does God intend? In the case of marriage or any other relationship, asking that question first makes all the difference. Of all the things that Jesus says and does to point to the kingdom of God, None reveals the nature of that kingdom quite so clearly as this little episode in today's gospel reading. In the middle of a very adult conversation about what else, sex, his disciples notice that some people are bringing their little children to Jesus in order that he might touch them. Oh, come on, come on. At first it's lepers, then it's paraplegics let down through the roof, and then it's foreign women who don't even worship the God of Israel. Now it's snotty-nosed kids who want to take up Jesus' valuable time. What can a bunch of toddlers and infants contribute to a grown-up discussion about the weightier matters of the law? The disciples figure this is a no-brainer. The brats have to go. Beat it, they tell the parents. Hit the road. That's Master Jesus in that house, not Mr. Rogers. If you want your kids to be entertained, well, take them to Chuck E. Cheese or something. Not for the first time in Mark's gospel, Jesus' disciples proved themselves further from the kingdom of God and the folks outside of the inner circle who were looking in. What Jesus says to those in that inner circle, he says to us in the church today, let the little children come to me. Do not stop them, for it is to such as these that the kingdom of God belongs. Truly, I tell you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will never enter it. Then putting his hugs where his mouth is, Jesus takes the children up in his arms, lays his hands on them, and blesses them. We must not view this scene as a pastel painting on a hallmark greeting card. Jesus is not the proverbial favorite uncle who has a soft spot for the kiddies. No, this text is not about sentiment. It's about gospel. How we, the followers of Jesus, treat children speaks volumes about how we ourselves understand the good news of Jesus Christ and our willingness or reluctance to be taught by children reveals how near or how far we are from God's kingdom. Truly I tell you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will never enter it. The key to this saying is that little word, receive. The kingdom of God is a gift. And children are closer to the kingdom because they know how to receive. Better said, they just receive. They don't think about it. 
They don't wrestle with their consciences. They don't think of a thousand reasons why they are unworthy or why their neighbors are unworthy. When you offer a young child a gift, the chances are she will take it. A few years ago, when we first began welcoming baptized children to the table for communion, a visitor whose grandmother is a member came. I think he was about six years old. His grandmother had prepared him for a going to the table because he was invited, but she hadn't told all the protocol and procedure. As he approached the table, an elder who was several inches above six feet tall leaned down and got eye level with a child and he said, brother, this is the body of Christ given for you. Little boy's eyes got wide as saucers. He looked at this bread held out in this gigantic hand and he said, wow. <laughs> to such as these belongs the kingdom of God. There's a difference, of course, between being childish and being childlike. It is the former quality that Jesus commends. He'd seen enough of childishness in his 12 adult disciples. Only a few verses earlier in this passage, we find the disciples arguing who was going to be first in the kingdom of heaven, who's going to hide the highest place at the master's table in glory, and in last week's lection, the disciples came tattling to Jesus about a person who had been casting out demons in Jesus' name. He's in trouble, isn't he, Jesus? Uh-huh. He's going to get it, isn't he? Uh-huh. One, one gets the feeling that Jesus wanted to put all 12 disciples in time out for a little while. No, he's not in trouble. Do not stop him, for no one who does a deed of power in my name will afterward be able to speak evil of me. Whoever is not against us is for us. Like so many of members of the church today, Jesus' disciples are so focused on what's right, they cannot see what's good. Children of all ages can be that way, but that's not the quality that brings them closer to the kingdom. We are closer to the kingdom when we are childlike, not childish. A child will stand on a high wall and shout, catch me, and throw herself into space, fully confident that your strong arms will save that's called trust, the essence of faith. A child will come to you holding the, the broken pieces of a toy, and, of a toy and, and ask you to repair it because a child knows that he can't do it by himself. That's called interconnectedness, the heart, the essence of community. A child will squat for 10 minutes and watch an ant carry a bit of leaf 10 times its size along the crack in the sidewalk. That's called awe, the essence of reverence. Don't misunderstand. I, I'm not saying that children come trailing streams of glory from God who is our home. None of that stuff. None of that transcendental stuff. No. Children are sinners just like adults in need of forgiveness and discipline and instruction. My own father used to say that he never really believed in the doctrine of total depravity until he had children. <laughs> or maybe it was until he had me. I'm not sure. 
Let us not fall into the trap of making children more or less human. The point is they can see some things more clearly than older people can. And sometimes they see nothing at all that we see. Once Andrew was rubbing the back of a four-year-old child in the nap room over in the preschool. The little girl was having a hard time settling for a nap. If you look through the window of the nap room, you can see sometimes every adult in the room sitting between two cots with one hand rubbing one back with the other rubbing another back. He laid his hands on them and blessed them. The little girl in question who has known Andra half her short life, looked at Andra's hand over the back of her ebony shoulder and said, Miss Andra, you're very white. <laughs> to such as these belongs the kingdom of God. My own children are in their 30s now, but when they were young, I used to take them along with me to visit members in the nursing home. I remember how Adam, at the age of three, was fascinated with the talking clock that one lady had. She was blind, and she had a talking clock on her bedside table. I was finishing up the visit and trying to offer a lovely closing prayer with great ministerial dignity. Adam kept hitting that button on the clock. Oh Lord, it is now 3.04. We ask your blessing, it is now 3.05. I never finished the prayer because the lady and I just burst out laughing. It was Adam who supplied the best pastoral care. Have you noticed that about children? When they're young, they aren't bothered by wrinkles or wheelchairs or the odd dribble running down the chin. They seem to see what God sees. They seem to perceive the image of God in every person. To such as these belongs the kingdom. Every now and then I'm asked why we don't do children's church over in the, in the education building while the adults are over here doing adult church. Well, the answer is simple. There's no such thing as children's church. There's only church. The assembly of God's people that encompasses the generations. Of course, in church, children wiggle, or they ask awkward questions. Of course, their Sunday shoes clip-clop along the hardwood floors as they come forward for communion. According to the way many of us were raised, that sound is disturbing, it's irreverent. According to this text, it is music to the ears of God. So here's a suggestion. If you find yourself near a child in worship, take pains to learn that child's name and say, I'm so glad you're here. Our praise of God would not be complete without you. And maybe the next time we are asked to teach church school or help out with the youth group, the first thing that pops into our heads will not be a long list of reasons to say no. And maybe the next time you are tempted to sleep in on Sunday and let your own kids watch TV and instead of joining us in this assembly, you will hear Jesus' words to you. Let the little children come to me. Do not stop them. It's often said that children are the future of the church. Well, that's not all they are. Children are its indispensable members now. Without them, we are 
far from the kingdom, with them we are as near as Christ's own embrace and welcome. Let the children come. Let us teach them. Let them teach us how to receive the gift of God's kingdom. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.